Hi, I'm Susie. Today I've got a special guest. Hi, Laura. Hi. We're going to do a fill from beginning to end. Let's get started. So my friend Laura here, I've known for a very long time since she was a little baby. She has beautiful hands and she loves nails. So ever since you were a teen, I guess, mm -hmm. although I polished your nails when you were a little kid too. This is true. We are going to do a fill on her from the very beginning, step by step. A nail fill is restructuring the nails from the previous appointment. The nail enhancement moves with the natural nail as it grows, creating this gap. The goal is to rebalance the nail and fill in the gap where the enhancement has grown away from the cuticle. Every client is individual and the grow out will be different for everyone. So she usually comes in about every four to five weeks mm -hmm. for a fill, but we wanted to do this this weekend. Boyfriend's out of town, so we got some time. So this is about a three week growth and I'm gonna walk you through what I would do with a client. This is like in a client appointment. This is exactly what we do with a lot of chatting. Exactly. <laughs> This is the design we did last time. We have a gel polish on here with a little stamp. And when you left last, I believe that was white. Yes. And now it is tinted blue, but so is your hair. Yes. So I assume they go together. Everything gets stained, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. So we're going to file this all off and I'm going to wear a mask. I always wear a mask because of the dust particles. I don't want it to be, you know, breathing in my lungs all the time. Now this bit I'm going to start with is very chunky. See that? Pretty good grit on there. I call them teeth. And this is probably a medium to a coarse. And that is going to cut into the gel polish and take it off. You do not want to use this on the natural nail plate. Never, never, never. So I've got my trusty drill and I am going to start removing Just make sure you, when you're taking off this gel polish, you are not touching the natural nail bed with this particular bit. Now the goal here is just to take off this color. I'm going to turn it up a bit more. Now you can do this by soaking it off too. But I have acrylic under there, so I really don't want to soak the acrylic, but I do want to get this gel off. Filing it to me is just as quick. Actually, I think it's quicker. So I will do this procedure for every single finger and it only takes hmm, five to ten minutes. Did you like this design, Laura, or did you get sick of it after a while? I liked it until it turned blue. <laughs> Now you can see even her cuticle area is a little bit blue because something just got stained in there. But we can buff that off with the next bit. Right now my goal with this is just taking off the gel polish. Now generally when a client comes in too, I always ask them if they want them shorter or a different shape. Laura, did you want them shorter today? Um, I like the length. Yeah. Laura usually goes for a longer length. Over the years, we've done different lengths on you, but this looks really good on you. I love this length. And you usually go for coffin, too. Yes. You want to keep the coffin as well? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if I see a lot of breakage and stuff, if I see some stress cracks and stuff, I might recommend that they come a week sooner if it's a long grow out or... Um, if they want to go a little bit shorter because those stress cracks are indication that there's they're being stressed with whatever you're doing in a day. And if the nails are long, there's a lot of telltale signs you can tell that the length or a shape is not working for a client. And sometimes, no matter how much advice you have to give them, they still want what they want, which is fine. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to change my bit now to this one. This is a mandrel. See the silver post? This on here is a arbor band. This one in particular is a medium or a fine. Uh, if I feel it, this one's a medium. I would not use anything more than a medium. 
If you're going to use a drill on the natural nail plate, it has everything to do with the bit that you're using. This arbor band is a medium. We want to use a fine or a medium, or you can use a hand file. If you're using a drill, it's very important that your pressure or the speed of the drill is very, very low and that the drill bit, this one in this case, is new. If it's really old and tired, you're kind of like grinding around the cuticle and it can burn on a client. So you want a new piece to put on there for every client for sanitary reasons and also because it's fresh and it won't kind of rub, just like make it painful and burn. That's what you don't want. So it's really on how you use it. Yes, you can use a drill. You just have to use it properly. I'm going to show you that now. So you want it on a low speed. This would be a high speed. You want it on a nice low speed. I'm going to put my mask back on. Every time I'm filing, I do wear a mask. Okay, so her cuticles are actually quite pushed. Do you push them back on a regular basis? You do! I do. Oh, wow. Wow, you get a little star. Thank you. <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to go around the cuticle and just gently buff that natural nail. We could even probably go a little bit lower. Now, whenever you see a Let's get a little dusting going on here. I'm just going to dust these guys off just so we can see. We don't have to dust it off at this point. It's only just so we can see. See that little white spot? That means it's lifted. The whole concept behind a fill is to prep the nail, natural nail and the acrylic, and take up any lifted surface whatsoever for two reasons. Aesthetically, it looks horrible if you put product over top of it. And you don't want to cause any problems by trapping any moisture, bacteria, or anything within that lift. So we want to take it up. In this case, I'm going to take the very corner and I'm going in at that white spot. See how that just kind of disappears? And then I'm going to go around the natural nail and I'm buffing the surface of the natural nail. Now, because Laura had a little bit of blue on the cuticle, <laughs> you can actually see, not as much on this finger, but when we get to that other blue one, we're gonna really be able to see it. And then I'm going over the surface of the whole thing. Now, here's something we wanna know when we're doing a fill. Okay, this is really breaking down what a fill does. Three weeks ago, when I did these nails on her, this whole nail, was up here, about a quarter more inch. Not only was this up here, but this was up here. Everything was back a little bit further. Now the finger is a little bit off balance. That's why some places will call it a rebalancing. I call it a nail fill. So this nail is sticking out here now. I just have to kind of recenter it. So I'm just going to buff over the whole nail. And then when I fill it, this bump, the apex, the arch, whatever you want to call it, is here now. We're going to put it back a little bit. And that is what restructuring a nail fill is all about. Okay, it's just going to continue filing all these nails. You want to make sure at this point too, you get every little bit of color, as in gel. Make sure every little bit is off. You don't want to encase it with your new layer of acrylic. Now, Laura, you like coffin, right? So we're going to leave that coffin shape. So I am filing the natural nail, but I'm filing it very, very light with very, very light pressure and a low, lower speed. Then when I hit the acrylic, which is this part here, I'm pressing a little bit harder. I could increase the speed if I want, but I can manage without. So I'm just making sure that I get all the color off and any type of little lifted spot off. There was the blue that she had on there. See that little bit of blue? So I'm gonna make sure that that is filed right off. See how that's gone? Those are little things you wanna make sure you do get rid of. If you don't, by the time you put your primer and your liquid and powder on there, it kind of magnifies a color like that. And you'll see it even more afterward. So make sure you're really diligent and try to get any of those kind of things up.
There's a lot of color on this one, so I'm going to make sure that I get all of that off. And just gently buffing the natural nail. Now, if you have a client that has any big areas of lifting, you got to take the time to get that off. You do not want to put any new product and seal in any bubbles or lifting or anything like that. Aesthetically, it looks terrible and it can cause a lot of problems down the line. We've had different colors of acrylics on here in the yeah. past few months. I can see all the previous colors. We had New Year's and Christmas in there too, so we were doing some funky stuff. Mm -hmm. See that little lift right near the thumb? Can you see that in there? It's super, super tiny. It's like just like a hairline. I'm gonna see if I can get that out. That's being really picky, but... There we go. Okay. Now there's two ways you can take off the dust. Three ways, actually. There's a nice little soft, like, one of these. But sometimes I find it's not enough to get into the corners. Oh, there's this really harder bristle brush. But I find that kind of hard on the skin. I don't particularly like that. But what I am going to do is take my towel and get rid of the dust. That never happened. There we go. Okay, so and then the other way is you want to take some alcohol on a lint-free pad. Or you can spray the hand directly. And you just want to wipe away. Okay, now I am going to use, oh, I can take my mask off now. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to use OPI today. So you do want to use a system that goes together. So don't use a primer from another company working with the powder and liquid from another company. You should use, I mean, you can, nail technicians do it all the time. But if you do it, you have to understand that you may suffer some service breakdown, which means the product may not jive. It may not be very happy for the next fill. So if you're combining products, make note if you're cracking or if there's lifting, that could be why. And when you put primer on, it's put on very carefully, right at the cuticle. You can hit the acrylic, it doesn't really matter, but you don't wanna oversaturate that nail. Okay, so now we are going to do a fill. So I'm gonna get my oval eight brush filled with liquid and then I'm going to go over to my powder and I'm going to release that guy and then clean my brush a little and then I'm going to flatten it down and I'm really focusing on my cuticle here. Dream focus that cuticle. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm using a lot of the barrel of the brush and I'm really pressing down and now pulling the excess off the end. I don't have to worry about building the product on the end of the finger simply because that arch is already there. If anything, I want to take it back a little bit and reset that arch. So if the arch is here, I want to take that arch and set it back a little bit more. You don't have to do that in one bead. You could do it in 10, it doesn't really matter. It won't affect the performance of the nail whatsoever. There is a certain time where you cannot flatten anymore and you wanna catch that just before so you can still blend it to the rest of the nail. This takes a lot of practice. But the idea what I'm trying to show you is how we fill in what you would call a backfill. This is one of the easiest fills to do because we're not doing a color change. We're not doing a fade or an ombre nail, the baby boomer nail. We're simply filling the back part. 
this is one of the fastest fills we can do too. So I'm gonna get another little bead for the back fill part. There's nothing that needs to be filled in here. We're just focusing on the back cuticle area. So when you put that bead down, I'm trying to flatten it as much as I can to make it a smooth transition. I'm not touching the cuticle. You don't wanna to touch the cuticle one bit. Not a little bit, not even nuzzled up to it close. You wanna be able to have a little bit of a tiny, tiny, tiny trench around there. Not one that you can see so much, but we just don't want the product butted up against the cuticle. And the reason why that's important is because when it dries, when you're filing, if it's touching the cuticle, you're in trouble. So we don't want to touch the cuticle. The objective is we're trying to get as close to it as we can, but we don't want to touch it. Now I'm going to look at this nail a bit here. This one looks a little bit thinner on the side, so just to be safe, I'm going to get a tiny little bead. Even though she doesn't have any stress cracks, I don't want her to have any. I'm going to add that right in there. See how he's just sitting there waiting? That's a perfect liquid to powder ratio. I'm just going to reinforce that one particular edge at one side and make sure that that's nice and strong in there. So I don't know if you can see, there's several different colors. I think Laura, maybe what, six months ago or so, we did a coral color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It depends on what design we're going for. If I wanted an all nude look, I would have to take all that off and reapply. But in the cases afterward, maybe Laura was just coming in and she just wanted a quick fill. So we didn't have to take away that coral stuff. We just added some new, just like we were doing here. And maybe she was wearing a solid color over top like this. So it really didn't matter on the different colors that she had on there. It just was irrelevant and it was a quick fill. But if you're doing an ombre or she wanted a French fade, oh boy, <laughs> we need to take all of that off. And if that was the case, then I would literally, considering the nails, natural nails underneath, I would just shorten them all down and start again. But I didn't want to do that today because I want to show you what a fill is. So this is a very tiny finger. So I'm going to get a very tiny little bead. And I'm just reinforcing that cuticle area as smoothly as I can. Looking at the thumb here, no stress cracks at all. It looks really great. Now, the better you get at making your application, of course, the filing will be easy. Okay, now we're ready to file. I'm gonna turn my drill on, and again, I don't run my drills hot at all. I actually run them on a the bit of a slower side, just because faster does not mean better. It's, it's all in the bit. So how I attack this guy is, now I'm gonna look at this very objectively. I look at it from all sides. See how this isn't a perfect arch across the top? But I want it to be. I'm gonna take this one down a little bit because I'm replacing the arch. I want it to be back here a little bit more, not over here. So I do that. I don't wanna just attack the one spot. I do attack it, but I go over top of the whole nail and you'll see when you hit your drill or your hand file, you'll hit all the high points and you'll, and you'll see it, it'll kind of come all white. And you wanna be able to hit that more and more and more. And you keep looking at it sideways to see if you're getting that bump and you can look at it down this way too to see if you're getting those bumps. But if you come in at attack it like one little spot, one little spot, you still have to go over it like this to make sure you're smoothing that whole thing out. Because ultimately that's what you're looking for, to be completely smooth. So right now I'm just filing that. That's looking pretty smooth now. Look how smooth that is. See how completely smooth that is now. So I will look down the barrel of it as well 
to see if we can get that same look. It's looking pretty good. So then what I will do is take, I'll switch bits and put this one back in. And I'll put it on a slower speed. This I'm just gonna go around the cuticles. And that is just to make sure there is no attachment to the cuticle whatsoever. And I'm just making sure that cuticle is going smoothly toward the acrylic. I want her natural cuticle and the acrylic to be very smooth together. Not like, you know how when it grows out, you don't want that ledge, you want it nice and smooth. That's really tricky to do. That takes quite some practice. First of all, it's hard to see but you really want to give yourself room in here to learn all aspects of it, but that one part is really tough. And I will go over top of the whole thing again. I do find this bit makes it very, very smooth in preparation for any gel that you're gonna put on there or any polish application. So go over the whole thing. to mix different brands of acrylic on top of each other? Oh, like if you go to one appointment, they use OPI, next appointment they use something. Mm -hmm. Totally fine. Okay. That's a great question, actually. It's just mixing into like, like a powder mixed with the liquid right at the time you're putting it on. Those powders and liquids don't necessarily go together because they both have different drying times. One might be a faster dry, slow set. And yeah, you don't want to do that. But yeah, from appointment to appointment, that's a very good question. And you can come in here with a hard gel and we could have put an acrylic on top. You could leave here and next appointment go for the hard gel. So yeah, you can go back and forth. They're quite compatible with each other. They're largely made of the same products, right? So shaping, okay, so let me just get, this file is really new, so I am going to score the edge. Don't forget to do this. If you've got a new file and you don't score the edge, you take a great risk of cutting the client. And I like this particular client, so I don't really want to cut her. Well, thank you. So coffin is a kind of a funny shape. Now, over the last time we've done these, these gotten a little bit wonky. They've mm -hmm. kind of worn away on one side. So we're losing our coffin shape. It starts, in my opinion, with the free edge, the very, very edge. Take your free edge and make sure that you make it as square as possible. That's the first step to a really successful coffin shape. Make that super square. And then we want to decide, she, you like them pretty coffiny, mm -hmm. right? So when a client likes them pretty coffiny, coffin is basically a square with a tapered. So as soon as you do a taper, this would be a very tapered square. Then if you taper it a bit more, that's more of a coffin. And the more you taper, it could be a really strong coffin. So the point on the end, the free edge is the ticket. So by determining where we want that to be really flat. Now we have to decide how wide we want it to be. If it's going to be a wide end, we're gonna be a very gentle taper. If it's going to be a very narrow end, it's gonna be a very strong coffin. She likes more of a strong coffin. So we are going to imagine this free edge here, this width being maybe smaller, like in this way more. So on that note, from this corner to this free edge, I am going to look at the nail very objectively this way. Like hold it, like isolate it all by itself. And I am going to file the one side a little bit stronger. But you gotta even it on the opposite side. So now I've gotta to go to this side and do it a bit stronger. Okay. See how much more I narrowed it? See how much more narrower it is than that one now? Quite a bit narrower right and sharper see how that sharpened right up so then i just want to make sure that i am making sure that that is nice and strong on both sides so we got ourselves a very happy strong coffin i'll do the same with each and every finger what it's done is over time it looks like my coffin was like this and it looks like it's kind of softened a little. And then the ends got softer. And that's what we're sharpening up again. We're just going to sharpen that right up. It's a very um, 
small change and it makes a very big difference. This is probably a 180 um, grit. 150 grit would be okay. The higher the number on a grit, like if we go up to 200, 240, 1000, the smoother it becomes. The lower number on a grit, the um, stronger it is, like the tougher the grit is, the grittier it is. Okay, so I got a nice sharp end there. You can see there wasn't that much work we did here, and yet we just made them super sharp. Do a quick one on the thumb. Usually when a client first comes in, we give them the book of polishes. Whether it's gel or polish, they get to decide which color they want. <laughs> That's my kitty. <laughs> but in this case, we're following this video with a design, and Laura is letting me do whatever I want. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. But we are going to finish these beautiful nails with the color I'm going to need for the next design. So in this case, I'm going to use this beautiful nude color, number 67, for my base of my design, which will be in the next video. So this is gel. I'm going to try to put this on as thin as possible. Now, fortunately, this particular company tells you to put it on as thin as possible. So this is very advantageous for what we are trying to do. Always do the thumb last. Sometimes it will pool. If it lays on its side, if it's done too soon, it can just pool inside the machine and then it gets a little thicker on one side and it will not cure. Okay, now we're gonna nuke it. And I'm gonna put a second, it just gives a nice solid look. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a top coat, and then we'll check out the reveals between the before and after of the nail step. So that's a complete easy fill from beginning to end for coffin-shaped nails. And we've got a beautiful nude on there to get us going for the next video. I've got a special design for you, Laura. I hope you guys tune to that. It's gonna be a lot of fun, really unique. I'll see you in the next video.